What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Alexander here, back with some more Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Continue trying to solve the murder. I have some affection for Everett, and I don't think my sister will approve him. Always made me to strive for more, try to strive for more, and now uh, that was more your peers, but it's on my nose. But I don't want to be otherwise. more in here. I think I should see it, that's, that's it down there for a second. Let's see. There it is. Stubbed out cigarette buzz, like we left the ring up, all the things they smoke. Super smoke. I will once we get done investigating some stuff. Her father mentioned this swindler to me. I understand it's because of him that my engagement has been delayed. I know the owner of a local brewery, and I'm convinced his business will flourish. He just needs some financial backing. Now Janice is free to be married at last. I'll invest my dowry in the brewery and make a fortune. Yeah, definitely not a get rich quick scheme. Never trust a man who tells you what you want to hear. He's after something. Taking advantage of my daughter's love for her departed sister. With that charlatan gone, things can get back to normal. My daughter's engagement to Everett Boyd can be announced at last. A girl of Janice's age should be married. Everett is a very sensible young man from a good family. He'll be very successful, I'm sure of it. Janice's eldest sister was strong-willed. Janice always followed her lead. That's why it's so sad that she asks her advice, even in death. Time for Janice to think for herself. I know what's best for her. Those two things don't uh, contradict each other, but whatever. Janice is a lovely creature. I would be honored were she to accept my proposal. I do adore her. All right. Let's see. Back to Okay, it goes all the way down to the end of the road. Okay, just gonna talk to him. That's me. Yeah, some fella come by here every so often. Gives me a silver sixpence if I tell him everything about the folks in that house. Nothing unusual about him. Just a regular fella. I've seen him go into that building over there. Who's that? The Ursula Psychics Aspirus Roberts. That one. All right. Who's downstairs? Doesn't look like it. Uh, and then here, she must be on third level. Fourth level? Yeah, fourth level. So, those cards for a medical doctor are in the identical except each of his prayers with his companion. W arrive after the, the others as usual. It'll be quite the suspicion. Also, make certain that we get a big flash this time. They must be convinced to shoot to kill me. It's gonna be amazing. Set of files containing disorganized details regarding Thaddeus' clients. For example, 
wants Cat to tell her she uh, tell her he should inherit. Janice's sister called her sissy. Now the cat I love to play with Lady Yu's tea spoons. Wants you uh, to tell her that her sister approves of the marriage. Knows a knows account number. Needs a signature to access. How much father enjoyed grass I should go back and ask about this. It's probably the uh, the doctor that we have to go back and ask. It says the account number is A72 at Kentish Bank. There's all those. So I just want to make sure we get all of the uh, info. So I'm pretty sure I know who I'm going to accuse. But might as well have all info first in case there's some uh, wrench thrown into the works. But I'm pretty sure it's the doctor who we have to accuse. Ursula's house. Seven months ago, medium foretells his own death. Blah, blah, blah. Robert L. Magnifico. No doctor. Yeah. Huh, some things are adding up. I found another newspaper article similar to the one I gave you. This one is from Sydney. It appears that it was exposed. We will be exposed with an exam just as though people were. Douglas has got to get into this and have to solve it. Alright. Last one. To Miriam, my maid, and to Douglas, my butler, I leave my house in China and thanks for your service and giving me a wedding day. Whenever that day shall be, I leave my dear cat mittens, all our enemies are good, and I bring him to I am the margin of scroll with every word I do now that I do not come more. But all the pieces add together on on uh, him being hired and being a fake, like, of course he is. Lady Ursula's health is not good at all. And now she's lost her cat, it's almost like she has nothing left to live for. He's been Lady Ursula's butler for years. We have plans to marry. But first, Douglas needs to put together a little nest egg. He says he'll have some money soon. Lady Ursula was planning to leave her fortune to her cat Mittens. Since the cat passed on, she's been going to that spiritualist and hopes that Mittens will tell her what to do with the money. All right. Back to the spiritualist house. Well, in a psychic's house, in the fraud that he is. Alright. I'm assuming, also due to the little marker on the map. A little like red thing next to the eyeglass that this is going to be the place. I'm mean, at this is where I talk to the people about that. Oh wow, we have things to talk to everybody about. Not just the psychic. <laughs> Do you think someone paid Thaddeus to tell my lady that a cat wanted them to inherit? Well. That would be quite a clever scheme indeed. I simply do not believe it. And if you're implying that my butler was paying Thaddeus, I must ask you, why would a great psychic do the bidding of a common butler? Because hmm? he's a fraud. My own sister, paying Thaddeus off? I thought he was a bit too insistent that I sign that paper. Well... Anne is going to get a good talking to, believe you me. 
You believe that Everett paid Thaddeus to manipulate me? It cannot be true. Thaddeus knew all of my comings and goings. He genuinely could communicate with the world beyond. Good Lord, you found the office? I admit it, then. Thaddeus and I traveled the world, bamboozling the gullible and then exposing the swindle. But his death was meant to be a fake. I have no reason to want Thaddeus dead. Quite the contrary. Yeah, you're right. You don't. He does. He was going to reveal my plot. He paid the price for betraying a fellow crook. <laughs> this Thaddeus fellow was rather too clever by half. But you pieced it all together very cleverly. To Mr. Raymond was particularly interested in this one. He admired the duplicity of Thaddeus. Spiritualist Thaddeus Smith routinely swindled not just his clients, but his clients, friends, and families. In city after city, Thaddeus and his confederate doctor, Wilburn, uh, Alurian those desperate to speak to the departed in the afterworld, but the swindlers were doubly, uh, doubly paid, first by their clients, then by those close to them. Who wished to manipulate them in such a fashion, Miss Ann Roberts hoped to gain legal authority for her brother in order to remove funds from the secret bank account. Mr. Everett Boyd wished to ensure his marriage to James S. Asquith. Uh, James a Mr. Everett Boyd wished to ensure that his marriage to Janice Asquith would take uh, place in order to gain a lucrative settlement. Lady Ursula's butler, Douglas, wished to have her dead cat counsel her to leave a fortune to Douglas himself. But none of these accounted for Thaddeus' odd court of, en of enjoying giving a good lesson to his fellow swindlers once he'd emptied the coffers of his clients. Thaddeus then hab habitually exposed the these manipulators before escaping by feigning his own death. This was corroborated by the supposed Dr. Wilburn, uh, pur uh, pur uh, purporting to be simply one more client, but on this occasion, Anne realized the coming exposure and enticed the butler Douglas, the only swimmer present at the crime scene, to murder Thaddeus in the dark. Farewell, Thaddeus. You may now speak to those in the afterlife, afterworld, at your leisure. Henry Raymond. By the way, that whole figure it out or else is what gave it away. <laughs> Alright. Uh, last one. Murder at the palace. Ooh, we get cane oh, there's a cane sword, too. Hopefully it's level 10. It looks really nice. Yeah, after this, we start the last Maharaja quest line. Then we get on with the main story. <laughs> I just wanted to go ahead and why I still not burn out to uh, get the side stuff done to where I actually do get it done this time. I don't believe I've ever actually finished it. I believe I got like close to the end and then was burnt out and I was like, ah, I'm done. No one's here. No one is here. You're hallucinating. I have a clear shot. Heard me. You're hallucinating. Hi, how's it going? He's never in there. The plexi murder of a palace guard. The well, half full reign of the palace. <laughs> There has been a murder at the palace. I need you to be careful with this one. Anti-royalist pamphlets have been cropping up and tensions are high. The queen is very nervous about security. This way. Get behind you there, Abilene. I don't know. He just fell over dead. Started hollering at me then just died. We're going there, Abilene. Or Abilene, whatever. This way. No, we're really just getting a whole tour here, aren't we? Yeah. 
Here we are. Good luck. All right. I do remember doing this one. When the palace guard slumped in a contorted position, eyes and mouth wide open, the body shows no signs of violence. That means it's poison. Alright, go whack on the head. Rifle's base, leg broken on the ground, signs of a struggle. Okay, maybe not. To Her Majesty's uh, Private uh, Secretary, Sir Henry Ponsby. Dear Sir Henry, I am troubled to have right after right concerning a disturbing situation that has recently occurred. Yesterday we were informed that a young boy has been abducted and we have rushed to bring this to your attention and bring you, and for you to, uh, to the attention of Her Majesty as you think necessary. We will tell the boys to turn their attention to the possible attempt to disrupt the community's investiture ceremony at the palace. Please be assured, Sir Henry, that we are doing everything possible to locate this child, one Arthur Doyle. Yeah, I, I've done this one. I had because I did finish these. I'm not going to spoil who it is though. Windows broken. The broken area is large enough to allow access to someone. A list of imminent inv invitees to the investor. We held this evening the Queen all night to several industrialists. I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. Someone can. Right here in a second. <laughs> Marked by deep gashes under someone's I wonder if someone in. could tell me more about this. Talk it. Please, Damn it. leave the room for a moment. No one is permitted to see me open the safe. Alright, if you insist. Imagine that someone was after the scepter. I must see it. I ordered the scepter with the dove to be brought from the tower. Tonight's event. <gasps> Thank heavens. It is untouched. Yeah, I remember this one. Got me? The poor man. I arrived to find him here, dead as you see him. He gave his life to defend my person. Only I know the combination. The vault contains the very precious scepter with the dove, which I've chosen to be used in tonight's knighthood ceremony. This evening, I will knight several industrialists that have worked to end the practice of child labor. All of London's luminaries are invited. All right. I will be honest. I was going to pick that door to get the invitation, uh, to get the letter, but <gasps> yoink! <laughs> oh yeah, someone died. Run! Hello. Hey, how's it going? I'm allowed to be here. On business. Alright. Hi. <laughs> huh? No, I got a little bit of itching here. One second. There we go, that doesn't matter. Oh. Can't believe I, uh, we've almost wrapped up several of the side uh, side missions here. Well, I can, but it's also it's kind of hard to believe. Alright, that's the timer, so I'm going to end this here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.